Hallelujah. Once again, we want to thank the Lord for giving us life and for making it possible for us to interact once again via, via the Facebook. As we always believe that the Lord has been good to you, and for that matter, he has given you and myself life today, this first Sunday in June, and that we are in the presence of the Lord and we want to interact with his word. And I pray that today all of us will be blessed as we take the last segment of our concept of the ship, the concept of the ship, the last segment. And today we, may, we will be concentrating on the shepherd. For the past two weeks we had looked at the ship and today we want to take time and look at the shepherd. So we'll be taking our reading from John chapter 10. We'll be reading from verse 1 to 18. John chapter 10 from verse 1 to 18. And later as we speak to the issues, we'll be reading Psalm 23 as well. But for now, shall we take our reading from John chapter 10 from verse 1 to 18. And it says, I tell you the truth. The man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The man who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The watchman opens the gate for him, and the sheep listens to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them. Then the sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All who enter came before me, all who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming... He abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not in this pen, in this ship pen, I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and they shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down. Of my own accord, I have authority to lay it down and the authority to take it up again. This command I receive from my Father. Amen. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, once again, water your word. Let it seep down into our hearts. Let it bring revival into our spirits. Let good things germinate 
from our hearts as we listen to your word. Open our eyes and cause our faith to grow that we may look unto Jesus who is the author and the perfecter of our faith. Let our faith grow today. Give us courage to face tomorrow because of the assurance in your word. Let there be healing today. Let it be physical healing. Let it be spiritual healing. Let it be emotional healing. Let it be healing in every sector of our lives. Let your spirit reign supreme as your word flows. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. So beloved, as we have been talking for the past three weeks, we have been talking about the ship. And in our earlier discussions, we spoke based on God's lamentation in Ezekiel chapter 34. And we read several verses, verse 2, 8, 9, 10 to 24. And we have said that these were the lamentations of God. Lamentations in respect of how his ship was not being well cared for. To the extent that God had decided to get rid of the shepherds at the time. And had promised that he was going to give his ship one shepherd. And that he himself will be the God of the ship. And the shepherd who will come out of the lineage of David will shepherd them. Then we moved on to look at John chapter 10, you know, part of chapter 10. And then we saw that Jesus was that one shepherd that God was talking about. He came and described himself as the good shepherd. And Jesus announced to us then that at the time he was physically on earth, there were other sheep he had that were not in the sheep pen. And so in our discourse, we realize that the reference to the sheep and the sheep fold at the time of Jesus and the time of the prophet Ezekiel referred to Israel and for that matter, Judah. But when Jesus came and after his death, the other sheep that Jesus spoke about were the Gentile nations that will come to believe in the name of Jesus and therefore be converted to faith in Christ, to which you and I are members. So we are also part of that sheepfold. And so the sheepfold, we are aware now, that it's the body of Christ, the body of believers, who are born not by the will of man, but are born by the will of God, by the faith and confession of Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Then we had also discussed that since the initial problem of the sheep was the issue of the shepherd, that the shepherds that were at the time of Ezekiel fattened themselves by eating the portions that were meant for the sheep. And so the sheep, and, and they also behaved as though there, were, there was no, no sheep. And so the sheep was scattered that problem had been solved. Now, when we look at today's reading, we realize that Jesus even described the shepherds that were before him as no shepherds. They said they were thieves and robbers. So we established that since Jesus, the good shepherd, had taken his seat, then the major problem of the sheep had been removed. The problem of care, the problem of nourishment, the problem of leadership and direction has been solved because the good shepherd, who is also the owner of the sheep, had taken his seat. Hallelujah. Now, in today's reading, we saw that Jesus was speaking about doors. And when we look at it carefully, we can identify two main doors. Remember, today we want to concentrate on the shepherd. So 
He says in John chapter 10 from verse 1, he says, I tell you the truth. The man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The man who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The watchman opens the gate for him, and the sheep listens to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. Hallelujah. So we want to look at it. So in verse 1, the Amplifier says that, I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, he who does not enter into the sheepfold, but climbs up some other way or elsewhere from some other quarter, is a thief and a robber. Now, what does it mean? This tells us that there is a process for a person to go through to become the shepherd or to qualify to be the shepherd of the sheep. There is a process. And the first process is to be able to identify the door. And when you identify the door, it means that if you are not the shepherd, you are likely not to discover the door. Hallelujah. Only the true shepherd, who is also the owner of the sheep, which also means that he is the one who constructed the pen and therefore knows the gate, is the only one who is able to enter into the pen. Now, it also means that any other person who describes himself or acts as a shepherd, as Jesus has said, is a thief and a robber. Which also meant that they did not come through the main gate. They might have climbed up. Apart from being able to identify the door, Jesus also says that the second qualification for the shepherd to be identified is the fact that the watchman must open the gate for him. Which means that the watchman knows the true shepherd. Now, when we match this verse 2 against the scriptures we read last week from John chapter 15, where Jesus said that he was the true vine and that his father is the vine dresser, then we can conveniently say that this watchman will be Jehovah himself, who also knows the good shepherd and therefore will Open the door. Opening of the door suggests the fact that the, the suggests the authority given to the shepherd. Now, in John chapter 17, Jesus in his prayer had made us aware that those who came to him were given to him by the Father, and that no one can take them away from him. And so in this scripture we see the father acting as the watchman. And the role of the watchman in this text is to be able, is to open the door for the good shepherd. Which also means that if God does not open the door for you, there's no way you can get in and get to the ship. The third qualification for the, to be able to identify the shepherd is that the sheep, the, the sheep listens to his voice. Oh, shout hallelujah. The sheep listens to his voice. Jesus had made it clear that those who came earlier than him, who carried themselves as shepherds, were not the true shepherds. So the sheep did not listen to them. This is ter terrible, very terrible. And I think that if we go through the prophets, you can, you, we can notice all that. From, is, from Jeremiah, from Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, 
you know, particularly when you look at the ministry of Jeremiah, the call of God for him was that I am sending you, but when you speak, they will not listen to you. But when the correct shepherd, when the true shepherd comes, the Bible says that the sheep will listen to his voice. Hallelujah. Then he says that they will not follow any, they, apart from listening to him, they will also follow him. But they will not follow any stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. I wish some other time we we'll have time to look at this. But we need to understand that the true shepherd has something planted in him. That which is planted in him makes it easy for him to identify the true and the good shepherd. And also being able to identify a pretender. Now in our discourse last week, I had said that it's very difficult for a true sheep to be led astray. And this scripture goes to buttress the fact. It says that if you are a true sheep, you will be able to identify the voice of the stranger. You will be able to identify the voice of a pretender. And that's why all along I've been saying that if you are led astray, it is largely your own fault. And that's why I pray for you. And I pray for myself that we will not listen to the voice of a stranger, but we will follow the voice of the true shepherd. Hallelujah. Now, the second door, so the first door speaks to the process of entering. The first door speaks to the process of identifying the true shepherd. And we can summarize all that in the life, death, and resurrection of Christ. Now, that brings us to the temptation of Jesus as recorded in the scriptures. Matthew chapter 4 talks about how the devil tempted Jesus, carried him to the pinnacle of the temple and told him to bow down and worship him and he will give him all the kingdoms of the world. That is a shortcut. That is jumping over the wall. That is entering through another way. Jesus says that if you go through any other way to become a shepherd, you'll be a thief. And he had rejected all that, but had followed the laid down plan of the father. The way, the door, the door to the ship is through the cross. Oh, hallelujah. The door to the ship is through the cross. And no one could enter except Jesus, the Christ alone. And that's why in the book of Revelations, we were told, Chapter 6, we're told that when, when, when the children of God gather and, and the scroll was released, no one was found on earth and in heaven qualified enough to take the scroll and to break its seals, except one who is described as the Lamb of God, who had conquered and overcame and took the scroll and broke its seals. So the first door, is the door that went through the cross to buy back God's people. Hallelujah. Now, the second door, the second door, the second door is Jesus himself. When he said in verse 7, in verse 7, we are told that Jesus, therefore Jesus again said this to them. I tell you the truth. I am the gate for the sheep. I am the gate for the sheep, Jesus said. He says that all who came before me were thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not listen to them. So the first door 
is the door of the cross that introduces to us the shepherd. Then the second door is Jesus. In other words, to be able to enter the pen, the shepherd should have opened the door for you. You should have passed through the door, the, 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 the shepherd, to be able to enter. If you are a strange sheep and you do not belong to the shepherd's pen, he will not allow you to enter. So this second door tells us that the only way we can be part of this sheepfold is to pass through the shepherd who is Jesus. So Jesus said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. Hallelujah. Now, how does this shepherd behave? He says that. Let's look at it. He says, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me, that's verse 9, will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. Oh, hallelujah. He said, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. In other words, there is no other way you can enter the sheep pen. And entering the sheep pen per the scripture means that you are saved. And that clears the fact that the Bible had said that there are goats and there are sheep. And I have said from the beginning that the Bible did not clearly tell us why he likened the believer to the sheep. But now it's clear that if God classifies you as the sheep, then you are saved. If you are listening to me today, and you are not saved by the time we are saying amen, I pray that you would enter through the correct shepherd and you will be saved. Now, Jesus says that he is the door. And the only way you can enter this pen is to go through him. Then he says that when you go through him, as long as you go through him, you will be saved. That is the first. Then the second one, he says that then you, you would be able to go out and come in free. Scripture says that if the Son shall therefore set you free, you will be free indeed. Paul describes this freedom in, in, in Romans chapter 8 as the glorious liberty of the sons of God. Because he says that when you enter through here, Paul says that there is therefore no condemnation for you because you are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. So what are we saying? Jesus says that if you come through him as the gate, if you come through him, the good shepherd, who is also the gate, who is also the true vine, you'll be saved. Then he says that when you come through him into the pen, then you, you obtain freedom and liberty. He says, now you can come in and you can go out. And when you come in and you go out, you will find good pasture. Who oh, shout hallelujah. It means that something, there is some transformation that will occur when you come through Jesus. We have said that the sheep is not specially intelligent. You remember the discussions we have had? We said that the sheep had certain challenges. The sheep is not as intelligent as other animals. We said that the sheep had problem with feeding. We said that, you know, that if you look at sheep, one of the challenges they had is that they have is that when they see a beautiful pasture, even in front of them, they will be spying another pasture which may not be as good as the one that they have. But in this scripture, Jesus says that when you come through him, 
you have the ability to identify and stick to the correct pasture. Oh, I wish you would shout hallelujah, somebody, wherever you are. It goes to buttress the fact that if truly Christ is in you, it will be very difficult for you to be led astray. If Christ comes into you, how does this work? The gift of discernment descends into your spirit. Hallelujah. So that you'll be able to identify falsehood. So that you'll be able to identify food which is not correct. I pray that that will be your portion. Hallelujah. I've been trying to share that within the period I discovered some people whom on the surface you thought that they have been brought up correctly, you know, through the processes of the scripture union. But they, list, they sit down and listen to deceivers. They believe the deceivers and also perform the rituals the deceivers prescribe to them. It breaks my heart that, you know, some of these people spend even their whole night watching falsehood. And their spirit is unable to identify it. Now, as we move on, you come to see that there is sheep. And there's also the true sheep. It means that there are fake sheep. Just as we have the true shepherd and we have fake shepherds. So also do we have the true sheep and the false sheep. The, 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 the true sheep is identified by certain characteristics. And one of the key characteristics of this sheep is ability to decipher between the voice of the true shepherd and the voice of the false shepherd. The Bible says, per Jesus' speech, that the true sheep will not follow a stranger. The true ship. There is no way the true ship will follow a stranger. There is no way a true ship will sit under the feet of a false teacher who turns the doctrine of the Bible upside down. Who begins to sell anointing oil and sell incense and ask you to do ritual bath and ask you to do strange things and tries to justify them by scripture. Now, if you sit by them and you listen to them and you are unable to find the truth, I challenge your ship, your shiphood. I challenge you. Is Christ in you? How did you receive your Christ? I pray that you will be like the sheep that Jesus is talking about. Because this sheep can hear the voice of his master. Hallelujah. So when you come through the body of Christ, when you come through Jesus as the door, you will find life. You will find liberty. Hallelujah. Then he says that, The true gate provides for those who enter him life. And that life is in abundance. That's what the verse, verse 10 tells us. It says that the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. But I have come that they may have life. And have it to the full. Now, of course, so it shows that any time the false prophet or the false shepherd comes, he has only one reason. To steal. If possible, to steal the good sheep. To kill. And to kill the good sheep. And to destroy it. But the Bible says that when, because Jesus comes, he comes to give us life. And to give us life in abundance. Hallelujah. I am praying that 
all of us listening this morning will receive the spirit of the true ship. They will receive the spirit that will make them identify the, the good shepherd. I am excited about this to tell you that if you are the correct ship, remember it will be very difficult to get lost. Why? It says that my sheep knows my voice and that they follow me. What that suggests is that when, the go- when you enter by the correct gate, the good shepherd does not stay at the back like we have the shepherds of our time. Where the shepherd is at the back with a rod and he's shouting to the sheep. The good shepherd leads the way. The good shepherd is always in front of the sheep. The good shepherd is always showing the direction by doing. He does not shout at the sheep. He does what the sheep must do. In other words, the true sheep is also a copier of the shepherd. When the sheep looks at the shepherd, they also do that which the shepherd does. And because the shepherd is constantly ahead of them, that is why the sheep, the true sheep, can never go astray. And that again to, goes to buttress the fact that if you are a true sheep and you get lost, it will be your fault. It will mean that you have taken your eye away from the, the shepherd. It will mean that you have remained at the back and you are not following the, 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 the others as they move. As I pray today, if you are getting lost, may you be found. Shout hallelujah. Amen. Now, I want to end by looking at something about the good shepherd in Psalm 23. Psalm 23, this is what it says. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Oh, that's powerful. The Lord, this is David praying. This is David confessing. Listen, it says that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me by quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And he says, verse 4, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Hallelujah. Now, when we combine this scripture with John chapter 10 and verse 11, we would identify about 11 important things about our good shepherd. Hallelujah. So the first one, as we pick from John chapter 10, from verse 11. John chapter 10, from verse 11. It says that I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Our good shepherd risks and lays down his own life for the sheep. He has said in, 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 in chapter 15 of John that if one sheep is lost, he goes to look for the sheep and brings him back. My shepherd... Your shepherd risks his life and lays his life down for the sheep. 
Oh, shout hallelujah for this shepherd. The second, the second thing that this good shepherd does is that he owns the sheep. Oh, yes. He is the owner of the sheep. And because he's the owner, he values the sheep. Because he's the owner, he feels for the sheep. I have shared with you over the past two weeks, my personal experience, if you like, like a shepherd with a few sheep I have. And I remember occasions that my sheep fall sick and I call the veterinary man. And the veterinary man is delaying. I do not only get worried, but I begin to think to do other things. Sometimes I begin to administer, you know, some first aid. I remember one of my lambs was born and the mother was not willing to feed it. I had to run to town and buy baby food and buy feeding bottle and carry the lamb on my lamb and, and try to feed it and encourage and find a way of encouraging the mother to do the same. That is the owner of the sheep. A shepherd who owns the sheep has compassion. A shepherd who owns the sheep has a feeling. Oh, hallelujah. And that is the shepherd David is talking about. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Then it also tells us in John 10 verse 14. It says that he knows and recognizes his sheep. And, and, and the opposite is true. He says the, the sheep also know and recognizes him. In other words, as the shepherd and the owner, he knows the sheep. And, and, and he says that he calls his sheep by name. Shall get there? But he knows his sheep. When I take my sheep out, out, and other people also bring their animals, even though you know, it looks as if there are no markings. I'm able to identify that which is my own. A good shepherd knows us, his sheep. He knows us. He knows me. He knows you. The fourth. Now we find that one in Psalm 23. It says that he makes sure the sheep lacks nothing. So David says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord, let's look at how, you know, the Amplify puts it. The Amplify puts it this way. The Lord is my shepherd to feed, guide, and shield me. I shall not lack. The Lord is my shepherd. Now, as I speak, I pray that you'll be able to imagine to see this shepherd I'm talking about. When you get to this level, then you realize that the troubles of this world are nothing because the Lord is my shepherd. You may be surrounded by trouble. Sometimes the troubles that surround us are such that you can't find, you can, you can find your way out. It looks, up, it looks as if you have come to the end of the road, but the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is your shepherd. If this Lord is your shepherd, you won't lack the way out. And that's why I'm prophesying to you that today you will find your way. The, the fifth thing we find about this shepherd is that he makes sure that the sheep eat the freshest of the green pastures. And so he says, verse 2, he makes me lie in fresh, tender, green pastures. He leads me beside the still and restful waters. And that is number six. He leads us to the freshest of the water. You remember, as we read in Ezekiel, the, 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 the shepherds of the Old Testament were told that they eat, they drink the clean water, then they muddy it for the rest to drink. But our good shepherd, he leads us to the freshest of the vegetation. Again, 
with my experience, you see, you realize that when the grass comes out fresh and is softer, the sheep like it better. And my shepherd, Jesus, leads me to the freshest of all the vegetation. In other words, as I look unto Jesus, he leads me to scriptures that will nourish me for each situation I find myself in. As I am troubled in my spirit, the Lord will lead me by his spirit to the pasture, to the word. Remember the pasture here refers to the word of God. He leads me to the correct word. Hallelujah. Recently, I was troubled. You know, everything around me appears to be going bad. All my vehicles were down, you know, and it appears that every step I took, things were going bad. And anxiety was entering my spirit. And I remember walking and sweating and abusoka and looking for parts for my car. And the prices were such that I, it was difficult to buy. In the midst of it, the Holy Spirit whispered to me, all things work together. For them that love the Lord, who are called according to his purpose. This is the work of my shepherd. He will lead me to the freshest of the vegetation. He says that he will lead me to the still waters. You know, the waters refer to the Holy Spirit. It also refers to the restfulness of our spirit and our soul. The Lord will lead you to a place where your heart will be at peace. The Lord will not lead you to a, rush, a running, rushing river so that you will even be afraid to eat or to drink. He will lead you to a place where your soul will be at peace. Today, may this good shepherd lead you to discover the still waters. That is why we can say that even if war rises up against me, Oh, Psalm 27. It says that the Lord is my light. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my stronghold. Whom sh who shall hurt me? He said, even if evil doers rise up against me to eat my flesh, I shall not be afraid. He says that even if war rises up against me, I shall not be disturbed. The perversion says that ne abaho de unye aleke keha jikama chupunyo. David said that if I had not believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, I would have fainted. Na ye meha ku esebena makpo yehu apenunyo la bagwe aufanyi bajufi. This is my shepherd. As I read this, as I meditate on this, my heart begins to rejoice. I realize that my shepherd is not a careless shepherd. I realize that my shepherd's eye is constantly on me. I realize that my shepherd is thinking about me. I realize that as I focus on my good shepherd, he will lead me to the best in this life. I realize that as I focus on my, my shepherd, he will lead me to a place of rest. Then the sixth, he says that he leads them to still and restful clean water. We've talked about that. Seven, he says that he refreshes and restores the life to them by leading them in righteousness for his own name's sake. That's in Verse, um, verse 3, verse 3, verse 3 says, he refreshes and restores my life. Oh, hallelujah. You might have been worn out by the troubles of this life. You might have been worn out by the things you are hearing. When Jesus is your shepherd, he will refresh your soul. He will restore to you the energy lost. He will restore to you the peace lost. He will restore to you the focus you have lost. He refreshes and restores my life. Then he says that he leads me in the path 
of righteousness for his own name's sake. That's powerful. That's another story. But let me tell you this. Jesus, the good shepherd, leads you to, to live to please him. So it is not by power, not by might, but by the spirit, says the Lord. So Paul says that I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. He says the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in him who loves me and gave his life for me. Jesus in us lives in us such that we please him when we hand over our lives to him. It's no longer we that lives, but Christ that lives in us. Oh, hallelujah. Now, if Christ lives in you, the Christian life does no longer become difficult. It's no longer a struggle. It's a matter of normal flow. I live, yet not I. I live, yet not I. Christ lives in me. And anything I lose, the Lord restores to me. You see, the Lord guides me so that I will not offend the laws of the Lord. Why would he do that? He says that he's doing that for his name's sake. Sometimes we say that we don't understand. In other words, my shepherd has an integrity to protect. Oh, yes. My shepherd has an integrity to protect. And he is not ready to tarnish his own integrity. To call me his sheep and not to guide me. He will guide me. He will hold me. Hallelujah. You know, as I say these things, I'm getting excited in my spirit. You remember? You know, let me share this with you. When I was a young man, and I was preparing to get married, I fell in love with a beautiful lady. And I thought that, wow, this lady is the end of the world. But as I began to pray and seek the face of the Lord, Things began to go the other way. And I began to accuse the Lord. I remember one day I prayed. I said, Father, if I am not able to marry this girl, it will be your fault. And the Holy Spirit whispered in my spirit, the Lord is ready for this one to be his fault. And today, I thank God for it. God in his own wisdom, realizing that I was heading for destruction, kicked that woman away of my way. Even though my heart was following her, the Lord destroyed every step. Why? God has an integrity to keep. Jesus has an integrity to keep. He is known as the good shepherd. He will not allow any proper sheep to go astray. He will go after them and bring them back. That's why I know that you will never be backsliding. Even if you are backsliding, the Lord will find you. If you are listening to me and you are backsliding, I know that the Holy Ghost is catching you right now. He's bringing you back home. He's turning your thoughts back to the pen. Come home, my brother. Come home, my sister. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Then the eighth thing is in verse 4. You see, he does not abandon the ship even when they walk through the valley of danger. Oh, hallelujah. He says that I'll be with you in fire. When you walk through water, I'll be there. Psalm 91 says that if you are in trouble, I'll be there with you. He says, I will deliver him because he knows my name. Oh, hallelujah. Remember, it is said of the sheep that they know the shepherd. I will deliver him because he knows my name. Do you know the name of your shepherd? Do you know your shepherd? Hallelujah. So, if Jesus is your shepherd... And you are going through storm. 
I want you to know that he's walking by your side. Hallelujah. You know, uh, if you read Psalm 91, he says somewhere that he will give his angels charge of you, that they will hold you in their arm so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. The next verse says that you will tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Hallelujah. Let the devil bring his worst. Jesus will walk with you. Hallelujah. In the book of Revelation, we hear the story of that woman who gave birth to the son. And we're told that the devil spew water, but the earth swallowed the water. So the woman will, will have victory. This is the shepherd we have. When we are in difficulty, he is there with us and he will bring us up out of it. Hallelujah. Then he protects us and guides us and comforts us, even in difficulty. In difficulty, he will be with you. That is one. In difficulty, he will protect you from being destroyed. Number three, in difficulty, he guides you out. So the Bible will say that there's no temptation. Paul wrote in Corinthians and said, there's no temptation that has overtaken you, which is not common to man. But with every temptation, the Lord provides a way of escape. The Lord, that's why Jesus taught us to pray. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The, the Lord will guide you. The Lord will lead you out. There's only one reason why you will remain in your trouble forever. If you are not listening to your shepherd, if you are not looking at your shepherd, but if you are looking and listening to your shepherd, no matter how hopeless and rep, re, uh, uh, hopeless and, and helpless your situation is, your shepherd will take you out. Hallelujah. Oh, I say, hallelujah, the Lord will take you out. Then we find also, number 10, number 9, the Lord will elevate the ship in the presence of his enemies by anointing them over those. Oh, hallelujah. So in verse 5, it says that, you will prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You will anoint my head with oil. My cup will run over. You see, this our shepherd is a wonderful one. When he sees that enemies are surrounding you, when he sees that every step of yours is being misinterpreted, then he organizes a party in your honor. In the presence of your enemies. Hallelujah. And I believe that that is why when you pray for your enemies to die, they don't die. Because Jesus must organize that party for you. And he organizes it in such a way that your enemies will look at it. They will see you as the honored person at the head of the table. He, 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 they will see you as the person they are trying to pull down, being lifted up. The one they are trying to deprive as the one whose cup is not only full, but also overflowing. Oh, hallelujah. So let the devil do his worst and the Lord will do his best today. Hallelujah. He lays a table before you. And I see the Lord laying a table before somebody today in the presence of your enemies. Verse 10 says that he, prov uh, uh, verse 6 says that he provides goodness. He provides mercy. He provides unfailing love to follow you all the days of your life. Hallelujah. As you follow the Lord, David said, goodness and mercy shall follow me. Goodness 
and mercy shall follow me. You see, when you are the true sheep of God, you, those who are not in the ship, they cannot comprehend how you survive. Because they may see you fall. Oh, yes. But because you are followed by goodness and mercy, goodness and mercy will lift you up. The Lord will quickly forgive you your sins. The Lord will restore you back to glory. Oh, shout hallelujah. That is why no unbeliever can compete successfully with a believer. Because our shepherd is super. Our shepherd is not like the thief. Our shepherd is not like the devil who comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Now, if you have this kind of shepherd... What would be your conclusion? I don't know what your conclusion will be. But this is how David concludes. He says that I will dwell in the presence of the Lord all the days of my life. I will dwell in the presence of the Lord. He says, surely goodness and mercy and love will follow me. All the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. All the days of my life. If you find a good shepherd like Jesus. Better lay your bed and sleep. So Psalm 91 says that he who dwells. In the shadow shelter of the most high. Who dwells in the shadow of the almighty. Will say that you are my refuge. Today. May your faith in your shepherd resurrect. Today, may your faith in this good shepherd be revived. You must know that you will not die. You will live. You must know that you will not fail. You will succeed. You must know that you will not continue to cry. There is somebody who will dry away your tears. The Bible says that, and the Lord shall wipe away all tears from your eye. Today, may the Lord wipe away your, your tears. You have been called failure. Oh, your failure is just a temporary state. The Lord is about to lay a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Oh, the Lord will cause your cup to overflow. Let me tell you. They will not only say that you are anointed, but you will be anointed over much. They will not only say that you are rich. You will be rich over much. They will not say that you have peace. You have peace over much. Oh, hallelujah. Because a good shepherd lives. Amen. We want to pray today. Today is the first Sunday of June, and some people are celebrating their birthday today. We all want to join together to pray and bless them. And as we pray for them, we are saying that look unto Jesus, our shepherd, our good shepherd, our true vine. Look to him. He will make all things perfect. He will make a way where there's no way. He will give you legs that are powerful that if you cannot break the door, you will jump over the gates. Oh, hallelujah. So we'll be praying for those who are celebrating their birthday in the month of June. And we'll also be praying for our nation, Ghana, briefly. And then we shall be ending this morning. Shall we all together join us, we pray. I want you, first of all, to pray for yourself and also pray for those who are celebrating their birthday in the month of June. Lift them before the Lord. Thank God for their lives. Thank God that he has seen all of us to this time. Thank God that irrespective of the news that we hear around us, Truly, thousands are falling at our side and ten thousands at our right hand. But the Lord is keeping us. Irrespective of what you are going through, 
For the fact that you are listening to me, it means that the Lord has saved you. So thank him today in the name of Jesus. As you thank God for yourself. And you are also thanking God for our brothers and sisters who are celebrating birthdays in this month of June. Pray that the Lord will be their true shepherd. Pray that they will remain in the sheep pen. Pray that they will hear the voice of the true shepherd. Pray that they will follow the voice of the true shepherd. Pray that they will not take their eye away from the shepherd. Pray that where they will end will be a glorious place because they are following the good shepherd. Pray that for this month and for this new year that they are experiencing, they will not see death. They will not see sickness. Their resources, money, and other things will not be spent in burying the dead. It will not be spent in buying medicines and drugs. If you are listening to me, you are celebrating your birthday and you have a condition that doctor says that can be managed. May a miracle take place in your life. May the good shepherd speak to your blood. May the good shepherd speak to your spirit. Let any devil and demons that are hiding in your spirit and in your soul come out now in the name of Jesus. Be set completely free in the name of Jesus. Now I want to continue to pray for our nation. I want to thank God for the things that the Lord is carrying us through. Yes. In this period of COVID-19, even though our, our numbers appear high, yet the Lord had been good that our deaths are minimal. We want to thank God for how far he has brought us and want to continue to pray that we will soon start recording zero per day and there shall be no death anymore. In the name of Jesus. And you who is listening to me, you will not be a candidate of COVID-19. In the name of Jesus, begin to talk to the Lord right now. Wherever you are, begin to talk to the Lord. Open your mouth. Thank him for, for navigating our country this far. And thank him that he's going to navigate us to better places. According, according to his word, he will lead us to green pastures. He will cause us to lie down beside still waters. Ghana will end up in a good place. Not because Ghana is too good, but for his own name's sake. Bible says that he will lead us in a path of righteousness because he cares about his integrity. We have cried to the Lord in this country. Yes, when we're crying to the Lord, people were mocking us. That is why Jehovah will rise up for this nation because his integrity is at stake. The Lord will not allow himself to be mocked. People think that prayer, even through the air, does not work. Our Lord will rise up. Oh, yes. Our Lord will speak and all will be silent. Talk to God about Ghana. Talk to him about how he's navigating us. And ask him to lead us to a better shore. A shore where COVID-19 will not be there. A shore where we will walk and fellowship without fear. A period where we would do, we will return to our normal and better life. Talk to him. And as you do so, rebuke the devil of COVID-19. Cast it out of our country. Cast it out of our continent. Cast it out of our world. Remember that the Bible says that the whole creation is waiting for the revelation of the sons of God. We, the children of God, we are here. And we are speaking. Our voice matter in heaven. Our voice matter on earth. Talk to God now. As we speak right now, we rebuke the demon, the devil, the powers and spirits behind this pandemic. And we declare to them in the name of Jesus, hold your peace, be bound and be cast out in the name of Jesus. And I see Ghana 
rise up out of the waters and rising above the waters and getting to a place of peace and settlement. Continue to pray for Ghana. Lift our elect, elect, election things, issues before the Lord. I'm sure you are aware of the, of the arguments and, and the things that are going on. But we have decided that as ordinary citizens and good citizens of this country, we are not going to leave our lives for politicians to play about like football. We shall detect, even though we are not in parliament, we are in the parliament of Jehovah. And our words will matter. I want you to leave this country before the Lord. And declare that only the will of the Lord will stand. Irrespective of what some people say. Declare to the Lord that the faith of this country shall not be in the hand of any political party. Jehovah shall sit in the seat. Just as the good shepherd make, makes law for his sheep. So shall it be. Pray for this nation in the name of Jesus. That Jehovah will take his seat. As the Lord declared to Nebuchadnezzar. That in the affairs of men. The Lord indeed do rule. Let the Lord speak into our situation. Any move. Any action. That will not bring us peace in this country. We hold to ransom. In the name of Jesus, we bring every proclamation and we bring every action and inaction that will not augur well for our well-being. We arrest them in the name of Jesus. And we declare that the voice of the Lord shall stand in the name of Jesus. For this reason, the elections of this year and the campaigns thereof will not disturb our peace. We refuse for our peace to be taken. We possess our peace. We possess our sound mind. In the name of Jesus. Because as we stand and declare the oracles of the Lord. We say that the will of the Lord shall stand. And nothing shall cause it to move. The Lord is greater than all. In the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for today. We thank you for your peace that, is us, that has come upon us. Thank you for your blessing that is also upon us. Today, Father, we submit to you. We submit to you as the true shepherd. We come as the true sheep, And we declare to you that never again shall we wander away. You are our Lord to you. We shall continue to look up to in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Yesu fale menye. Yata chile choyim. Le nye pro la nye la muti. Ele jinye pom le nyeim. E chonko ye hanam. Blessed be the Lord. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Shall we receive the benediction? May the good shepherd lead you. May the rod of the good shepherd make a path for you in the wilderness. The Lord truly will lead you to a place of rest. This man, the Lord will give you a testimony. If you have been ruled out, the Lord is ruling you in. If you have been counseled, the Lord has rewritten your name. They say it will not be good for you. But I declare to you, it shall not only be good, it shall be better. They say you are down. But I declare to you that you shall be above only. The peace of the Lord rests and abides with you now and always. Amen. I want to pray. Once again, encourage you. Want to pray for the offering that you'll be giving, and because we are expecting that you will send your offering via the numbers that are available. If you are in doubt, we want you to call the uh, office and then send your offering and your tithe. So I'm lifting the tithe and the offerings that you are going to send into God's hands, Father, in the name of Jesus. Our tithe, 
are part of our worship. Our offerings are also part of our worship. They are holy in your sight. Lord, everybody who would decide today to send their offering and their tithe, may your favor rest upon them. Lord, look upon it and open the windows of heaven and release blessings upon them in such a way that no one else can disrupt. You are blessed. You are favored. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen.